The second category, FDA-approved targeted therapies in ovarian cancer, have been inhibitors of poly-ADP ribose polymerase, which we call PARP. In fact, there are three FDA-approved PARP inhibitors in six different indications, and I promise you there are more to come. Uh, we have been talking about the frontline treatment of ovarian cancer, how the addition of bevacizumab to carboplatin paclitaxel is a good option and indeed FDA approved, particularly in the sickest patients. But now we have a frontline bi biomarker, Dr. Moore. Thank you for your passion in Solo One, presented at ESMO, published in the New England Journal, FDA approved December 19th. Tell us about Solo One. Solo One uh, was a randomized phase three study that uh, allowed women with a BRCA mutation, uh, advanced ovarian cancer, uh, excellent performance status, uh, at least an attempt at side reduction, either primary or interval, and either, importantly, either a complete or partial response to frontline chemo uh, to uh, finish their chemo and then be randomized in a two to one fashion to receive Olaparib tablets uh, twice daily or placebo. Uh, and they uh, continued their assigned therapy until disease progression. And if that didn't occur, they stopped at two years. Uh, unless at two years there was some evidence of disease, uh, CA125 elevation, something that the provider felt like the patient should stay on, their assigned treatment, and with um, appeal to the medical monitor or me, they could do so. Primary endpoint was investigator assessed progression free survival. <coughs> and there were a number of secondary endpoints inclusive of overall survival um, and quality of life endpoints. Uh, the uh, arms were very well balanced and importantly did represent ovarian cancer in general. There were about 30% of patients that had neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, uh, um, but importantly, you know, 70%-ish had primary side reduction. And of those, uh, over 70% were debulked per the surgeon's report to no gross residual. So this was, and they were most, 80% were stage three versus stage four. So this is a really good prognostic group mm -hmm. of patients. Mean like, age of 53, most young, had great surgery, yep. and they're all BRCA. And they're all BRCA. We should cure those without but we'll laugh. That's the myth of BRCA. But we don't. That's the myth. That's what people thought. Um, and this is a group that's excluded from every study now because they're, they're so low risk, which, which we need to stop saying. So, so very well balanced. Uh, what we showed in the primary analysis was uh, at the data cut point, we hadn't even reached the median in the Olaparib group. In the placebo group, the median was 13.8 months. Uh, by, by six months, 20% of the placebo had progressed. By a year, 50% of the placebo had, had progressed. And by three years, 27% of the placebo group had, were disease-free, only 27% versus 63 in the, um, in the Olaparib group. So the hazard ratio between the curves, even though we don't have a median, was 0.3, so 70% reduction uh, in the risk of progression. And if you look at our sensitivity analyses, the estimate for the median progression-free survival for Olaparib is somewhere between 47 and 50 months. Three years difference. Mm -hmm. Three years difference, uh, and, um, and, and certainly um, you can access the paper and see the curves, but the shape of the curve on the Olaparib group is unlike any curve we've shown in ovarian cancer to date in that it flattens. And it flattens, and that, f that, that shape is maintained beyond the two-year stop point. Mm -hmm. So you don't see, unlike bevacizumab, where you stop at 15 months and then they start to tail off, here you stop and, this, and they just keep right on not progressing. Said another way, though, the, the shape of the curve early on is very steep. Very steep. You said in the, in the placebo arm, it was 50% at 12 months. Mm -hmm. and, and so even in the elaborate group, it's steep, and then there's a tail. Maybe there's more cures. That's what we hope. We can't say that yet. I know. But we hope there's more cures. So, Elena, has this changed your practice? Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, PARP inhibitors in general completely changed my practice. Um, you know, I was excited about it in recurrent setting, but this changes the entire disease management. And I believe, I mean, I know we can, but I believe what Brad said. I think this curve means but potentially for the first time we can actually increase cure, which we've never been able to do. And you mentioned stem cells. Maybe there's an interaction there.